Hi everybody, I'm Cass, this is Jasper, and welcome back to Tales of Wanderlust. Tonight we are going to be staying in a Walmart parking lot. So if you want to see how we find them and if we find them safe, then stay tuned. are driving from Colorado out to Ohio to the Airstream factory. I am getting a new all-electric fridge installed and then I am immediately turning around and heading back to New Mexico. We are doing this drive out to Ohio in two and a half days and then Ohio to New Mexico in two days. So that's 2,500 miles over four and a half days worth of driving. The reason I stay in parking lots when I do these kind of drives is then you can pull in, just hop in the trailer and sleep and then get up and drive in the morning. You don't have to worry about checking in, paying for a place, finding an RV park, anything like that. It's really very simple. Usually Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, those kind of things are right off the highway. So it doesn't even add that much time in terms of trying to drive to a place. My preferred places to stay are Cracker Barrels because you pull in, they have specific parking out back for RVs and buses. You put an order in online, you walk up to the door, they hand you the fried chicken and biscuits, and then you hop back in your RV and you eat your really delicious fried food and then you go to bed after a long day of driving. It's really great. But unfortunately because of COVID, I'm trying not to go in and get food. So I've been staying in Walmarts. Walmarts are perfectly fine as well. Look at the reviews online and really see what others say. Some Walmarts on the different RV apps will have one star and people will say that they did have a sketchy experience there or there's a lot of weird things going on in the parking lot. So read the reviews stick with those and if there's one that has sketchy reviews just don't stay at it it's not worth it and move on to the next one i find usually right along the main highways you have a lot of these different walmarts or cracker barrels you can stay at so you do have plenty of selection to make sure that you get one that feels safe and the reviews say it is safe all right so we've been driving since 7 a.m this morning it is 3 30 right now so about eight and a half hours we're getting tired i usually like driving when it is daylight Light out which in the summertime is great you can drive till 9 10 o'clock at night depending on where you are in the winter time it is a little harder we only have about one more hour of daylight but I want to get a few more hours under my belt so I'm gonna look for a place to stay probably two three hours down the road I usually look for a couple of different places to stay along the route that way, if I start getting really tired, I can stop and have a place in mind, and I'm not trying to find these places while I'm driving. The other thing is it's 37 degrees right now. The sun is still out. Hopefully it doesn't go below freezing, but I do have to think about the water lines in the RV. I don't have the heat on in there right now because the heat requires propane, which I turn off while driving. So I don't want it to get too cold while I'm driving. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the temperature. I wanna have those different options. So if it starts getting too cold, I can stop for the night, turn on the heat and make sure that nothing freezes. Okay, so that's kind of what I look for. Let's see what is along my route. Right now I am in Missouri. I don't know where I am in Missouri, but the apps I use, they will show me that and then we can figure it out from there. So when I'm looking for these parking areas, I find that the app RV Parky is the easiest and best one to use. I strictly use it for parking lots. If I can't find a spot to stay on RV Parky, I do have an app called Trucker Path and that shows me all the different truck stops. I don't like staying at truck stops. They're noisy. Truckers really don't appreciate it if you pull into one of their spots for the night. They've had a really long day of driving too. They don't wanna pull in and see a little RV sitting in the last parking spot and then they gotta drive on down the road to the next truck stop. So I don't like being that person. I would much rather be in a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel, but Worst case scenario, I will use a truck stop. I think I've stayed in them maybe two or three times. I personally don't stay in rest stops on the side of the highway. I had one weird experience in one, not during an overnight stay. I just pulled in. I was gonna run into the restroom, get Jasper out for a walk. We were parked all the way at the end of the truck stop in the last possible spot because I had the RV attached. 
and we had these two guys start walking towards us and they were just staring me down and there was nobody else around. There was nothing else at that end of the parking lot. It was really weird that they were walking towards us. So in that instance, I just opened the door and let Jasper out off leash. He is not very friendly to strangers. He comes out barking and he's a big old German Shepherd looking dog. So the minute he flew out of my truck barking, those guys turned on their heels and they went the other way. So thankfully nothing happened, but it was still kind of an odd experience. It was during the day. It wasn't at night or anything. It was probably mid afternoon when it happened, but it's given me a weird feeling about rest stops since then. So I just avoid them. If it ever comes down to it and I find one with really good reviews and I really need a spot to stay, maybe I'll do it. But at this point, I've never been in that situation and I stick with Walmarts and Cracker Barrels. So let's find one. Okay, and now you get to judge me for all of the dust on my dashboard. Yes, that is dust. Okay, so these are my travel apps that I try to use. RV Parky is the first one that I'm going to go to for these kind of overnight stays. So I can just search near me. And actually you can see right close to us there is a Walmart. This is the Walmart logo. But that's too close. I do still want to go a couple of hours. Looking at my route, first I gotta figure out where my route is. So I'm coming up through St. Louis, up into Indianapolis, so that is my route. I do wanna get through St. Louis tonight and I wanna head further out. So first thing I wanna do is make sure that 70 is the road that I'm actually going to be driving on so that I make sure I am finding a spot to stay that is actually on the route. So if we zoom in here, 270 through St. Louis, so see through St. Louis, and then I hit 70 and I take 70 out. So 70, something along 70 is where I'm going to stay tonight. So hopping back over into this app, I lost where we are, there we are. So I wanna get through St. Louis and then I wanna go over on this side on 70. So this Walmart, you can see it's a pretty good distance off 70. I don't really want to do that. So we're going to keep going up here. Here's a Walmart. Overnight parking is allowed. It has five stars. So I'm going to click on that. Users report overnight parking is allowed. There is the address. You can see that in the pictures, there are trucks that park there as well. RVs. I do like staying in Walmarts when there are other people around. I've only stayed in Walmart once where it was just me. I was nervous. Um, nothing bad happened. It wasn't a weird Walmart. It's just weird to be the only person in the parking lot. That Walmart did close down at 10 o'clock. So I was literally the only person in the parking lot the entire night. So I do prefer to stay somewhere where there are other people. If we read through the review, stayed here on November 1st, 2018. That's a while ago after calling first told to stay by the garden center. There's a whole line of semis for the night. Great overnight spot. Love the designated parking. They have truck and RV spots. Great if you park away from the trucks. Yeah, if there are trucks, it is gonna be a lot louder than a Walmart where there are not trucks because trucks do run their generators all night or their engines, I'm not sure what it is, but it is loud. So that is one thing. Some Walmarts allow them, some Walmarts do not. So this one obviously does allow trucks. It will be a little bit louder. So great place, good place. Posted, no mark parking violators will be towed. And that was in 2019. So that is something just to keep in mind. 2019 is the most recent one. And they were after the posted no parking. So I'm gonna call this place real quick and just make sure that parking is allowed. So there's a little button here, you can call them, and you can just dial out. Yeah, I was calling to see if you guys allow overnight parking. We do. You do, is there a certain spot to park or just anywhere? That I can do, awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so that Walmart, they confirmed that they do allow overnight parking, so that is a good option for us. So let's see how far away they actually are. Sometimes when you look on a map, things look a heck of a lot closer than they actually are. So we're gonna go back up here. It's Vandalia, Illinois. 
There it is. And that is two hours away. So two hours would be 5.45 at night. So it'll be dark. That'll be about an hour's worth of driving in the dark. And then that'll be about four and a half hours of driving tomorrow. So that's a pretty good option. I do want to see if there's anything a little bit further beyond that just in case we get there and then I feel like still driving further. So a little bit further up the road here, we do have a Cracker Barrel and a Walmart. So I click on those. The Cracker Barrel has really good reviews. The Walmart says no overnight parking. So that is an option a little bit further up the road at that Cracker Barrel. And then if we keep going, we've got another Cracker Barrel. It says no overnight parking and then a Walmart with not the best reviews. So I don't go 100% off whether the app says no overnight parking or overnight parking allowed. Sometimes that is out of date and, sorry, somebody's staring at me as I'm talking into my GoPro in my truck. I do find a lot of Cracker Barrels on that app say no overnight parking, but if you call them, they do actually allow it. They will mention something like, and we open for breakfast at 6 a.m. the next morning or something like that, kind of hinting. But if you do stay in a Cracker Barrel parking lot, just remember it is a private business and they're letting you park there overnight. So go in, have dinner, have breakfast, support the business because they are letting you stay there for free. Walmart, I do most of my shopping at Walmart, so I don't feel like I have to buy from that specific location. I buy from Walmarts all over the country. So I'll pull into Walmart, not buy something, and then leave without feeling guilty, but I don't feel right doing that at a Cracker Barrel. So it's just a personal thing. That's how I handle it. So we've got that Walmart plugged in two hours down the road. We're gonna hit the road now and then see how we're doing in two hours. Here's our exit, and there is Walmart right there. So it is literally right off the exit. You know what's really funny is now that I'm pulling in here, I have totally stayed here before. It's funny when you start recognizing Walmarts. Okay, so this one does have a sign. So it says truck and RV parking. Trying to figure out where we want to park for the evening. So all of the tractor trailers are right here. And they are gonna be loud tonight. There are other trucks parked over there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a spot at the end of one of the rows. That way it's a little bit quieter for me and I'm not hearing the trucks all night. All right, here we are at Walmart. So the propane is on. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on the heat here because it is cold in the RV. So here's the trick on a cold night. The heat is on. So I'm gonna go walk Jasper, and then by the time I walk him and get back in here, it'll be nice and warm. All right, there we are. We are parked for the evening. The nice thing is because the Walmart is in shopping centers, you can walk the dog and get food to go if you really want. So Jasper is currently peeing. We're gonna go for a little bit of walk and stretch the legs, and then we will come back home for the night. The funny thing is when I pulled in, I thought it looked familiar, but I have eaten at that Chinese restaurant before and I have stayed here before, so kind of funny. The other really nice thing about staying at Walmart is they do have grocery pickup. So there have been instances where I pull in, I get the address and then I check and they do have early morning grocery pickups. So I just put the order in, drive the RV up to the pickup area and then pick it up and hit the road. And that is a very efficient way to go grocery shopping when you're traveling. All right, are you ready to eat dinner, Jasper? Because I am so ready to eat dinner. Oh look, we got more trucks pulling in for the evening. All right, time to go home. Jasper, we're all tangled. Are you ready? Oh, all right, going in. Good boy. It is already feeling warm in here, so success on that. Jasper has his stuffed animal, so we are good there. We've eaten dinner, and now it is time to get this guy out for another walk. Jasper, are you ready to go outside? 
One of the things that you'll notice is when you're in parking lots, the views aren't that great. So all of the blinds are closed also for a safety reason. That way people can't peer in and see that it's just me and they don't know what's in here. So all the blinds are shut. There is a little bit of light that comes in through this rooftop fan, but it's not enough to keep me awake. The biggest thing is I can't park directly under a parking light or one of those street lights because then the light will be extremely bright and this will keep me up. So as long as I park somewhat away from one of those parking lot lights, then I'm okay with that. So in terms of safety, we've never had anybody knock on our door, knock on wood. Even in any of the parking lots we've stayed at, any of the boondocking spots, anything like that, I've never had a knock on the door. I always call ahead to the places just to make sure that it is okay for me to stay there for the night. And I don't stay more than one day. So I was in one parking lot in Kalispell and the police were driving around and writing down license plates because a lot of people would stay there more than one night. But by just staying there one evening, pulling out the next morning, I didn't have anybody knocking or having any issues with that. I'm gonna take him out for a walk because he's getting a little anxious and restless here. So we're gonna go for a quick walk. To continue on our safety conversation, when I'm out here walking Jasper, it really is the only time that I get somewhat cautious, we'll say, not necessarily nervous. So I stay within the lighted areas of the parking lot. There's usually sidewalks you can walk along and we really don't venture out too far. Sometimes you will be in a really nice shopping center and then you do have further that you can walk. But if it's just a simple Walmart parking lot, we kind of do laps around the parking lot. Make sure you look for traffic and you don't get hit. But that's about it for exercise. And then we go in the RV for the rest of the night. It's really not an issue. There are usually other people around that are camping. So it's usually uh, actually a really safe feeling to stay in a parking lot. We actually just had neighbors pull in. So that's really nice. And now we aren't alone for the night. All right, that is it. If I can close the door. That's it. We're in for the night. Doors are locked. All the blinds are shut. We have other RVers here. We have the truckers here. The one other thing I do for safety is I take my key fob and I keep it by the bed. That way, just in case something crazy ever does happen at night, which it never has, then I have the car alarm and I can set the car alarm off and that will bring attention to us. Okay, one thing we will do so that you can see how dark it is in here is let's do a light test. So if you remember where we're parked, there's a big parking light over there and then there's about a line of 12 semis to our right, but all my blinds are shut. So when I turn the lights off, this is how dark it is in the base camp. So I'm pointing towards the back of the RV right now. We're coming around to the side window. You can see there's just a little bit of light there. And then these are all of the front windows. That's it. Otherwise it is completely dark in here. All right, good morning, everybody. It is 24 degrees and it is pretty cool out. So I have two jackets on. But we are ready, we are gonna hit the road. We slept well here, although my legs are kind of sore from driving so many hours over the last couple of days. So we've got five hours to go today, so it's not really bad at all. And then we'll be there, we can walk around, relax, get a new fridge installed, and then we'll turn around and head back to New Mexico. So it's been a long trip, but thankfully Walmart is here and they make it really easy to spend the night in their parking lots. We do it all the time and it really makes these long trips a lot more convenient. So if there's any questions I didn't answer about staying in a Walmart, comment below and I will respond and answer all of your questions. So thank you so much everybody for tuning in and we will see you next time.